concert movement number one. The basic head bob. Ready, go. Gotta fix my headphones. No, it goes. All right, Bradshaw with you here on a really surprisingly damp Tuesday afternoon in the capital city. The phone number is 244-0077. You can email me, radiobradshaw at gmail.com, and follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash radiobradshaw. I have to admit, you caught me looking up. Not all that impressed with the iPad mini, to be honest. Maybe a $299. Mm. But we have more important things to talk about, like binders full of bayonets and stuff. All right, the phone number is 244-0077 if you want to take part. Email address, radiobradshaw at gmail.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash radiobradshaw, where I'm posting uh, the preview of the show right now. Love my iPad. All right. So last night was the end of debate season, and it has been a long and arduous march. I mean, we've had $10,000 bets. Rick Perry can't remember up to the number. Where'd that come from? <laughs> can't remember back to the number three. Admiral Michelle Bachman. Um, Ron Paul. Um, and finally, Big Bird, Binders of Women. And bayonets. Those were the and, and malarkey. We can't. We have a malarkey gap. Actually, the Republicans don't. They are absolutely chock full of it. Uh, last night um, was a third and final presidential debate, and I'm sure the least uh, watched due to Monday Night Football, due to uh, Major League playoffs, due to CNN. Is this the Frank is calling? Yeah, you got to actually put the right picture up, just saying. Uh, I'm not sure I want to do this, but what the heck? Let's get it out of the way. Frank! Hello, how are you? I've reformed. I've seen the light. Good. Took enough. My gosh. I, li I actually took time to listen to General Wesley Clark... And Robert Gibbs on some pre-race, pre-game uh, debate there last night. And they have reformed me. I have now seen the light. Oh, good. Welcome uh, to the team. This information, on, come on board for the big win. This information that uh, 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 Susan Rice, the U.N. ambassador, gave out on the Sunday talk shows was only the best uh, CIA in, uh, assessments that, w that she could be given at the time. Well, that's what I told you yesterday. Okay, so now we're on board. Boy, I'm glad we're in a... Because it kind of seems like I've heard that somewhere before. Where where did I hear that before? At the, uh, WMD? the difference between the WMDs oh, and no, the Benghazi no, no, attack that. Is, that, that. is that there was intelligence saying there's no WMDs. We had inspectors in the country. And how do we know that Saddam didn't have WMDs, we stopped selling them to him. I think I think there was some nuclear deal in there, too. Oh, you mean the yellow that, cake uranium? Yellow that, cake something. Hold on. The that the, hold on. That the intelligence community said, don't put this in the State of the Union because it is not correct. And that's why Joe Wilson, remember him, um, uh, came out claim? and threw the president under the bus for putting that false claim into the State of the Union, which is why Dick Cheney's office outed his CIA officer wife. And it wasn't the fact that maybe Valerie Plame was in a Washington, D.C. directory and she was known as a CIA operative no, anyway? No, she wasn't, which okay. is what the CIA said. Okay. Well, in any case, I'm now going to uh, wait till the investigation is totally done. And I realized that these people were only going on the best assessment at the time, so if they put their foot in their mouth, I forgive them. Well, it wasn't a matter of putting the foot in the mouth. It's a matter of that was the literally the information she was handed by the CIA that morning. Well, now do you want to hear my post-debate uh, or my post-debate analysis? Well, do Not I have to be polite or be honest? I'll be honest. 
No, I mean, do, do you want my honest answer? No, sure, but sure. what the heck? Give, give, your, give, give your honest answer. Who, who do you think won the debate, Frank? Well, I'll tell you, I'll preface my remarks by saying I think there is a narrow group of people that both uh, candidates was aiming at last night because obviously of what was going on yesterday, uh, such as Joe Klein, George Stephanopoulos, and uh, Tom Friedman coming out and saying this is a non-issue. Uh, this that we should. This is a uh, move on. Move on. Uh, well, uh, how about that? Tell me why Mitt Romney changed his positions again. Well, let me give you my answer, and then I'll try to address your thing. But All basically, right. uh, what I feel like is men are decided. There's not many undecided men out there on Obama. They're either going to give, they're either going to vote for him again, or they've decided they're going to toss him out. The only group of, of people who is left to go after that is in the undecided category is women voters, and pr- primarily conservative women voters who gave the guy a chance last time uh, because they had war fatigue. Uh, Obama clearly, or, or Romney clearly, in my opinion gave a left-right combination within the first two minutes of the debate, and I think flattened Obama, and Obama was out on his feet and just uh, rattled the rest of the night, but I think he got knocked out in the first two minutes of the first round. Well, that's pretty much the opposite of when, every poll and well, pundit when, out there, but okay. When he made the statement that he patted, uh, uh, he patted Obama on the back right off the bat mm-hmm. before he had a chance to pat himself and said... Congratulations on getting Osama bin Laden. You think, and, hold on. Do you think that's like a bold stance or something? No. Exactly. But he, he congratulated him before Obama had a chance to pat himself on the back, and he said, we cannot kill our way out this mess. That was the left. Let me, let me ask you what would have happened if Mitt Romney had given that answer at a Republican debate. If Mitt Romney had said, we can't kill our way out, we need to let sanctions work, what are some of his other... Uh, flip-flops. I'm for uh, a timeline to get out of Afghanistan. That was a good one. Um, you know, his flip between the 47% tape where he talked about kicking the Israeli-Palestinian can down the road versus we need to bring them together last night. Well, I don't know about you, but as I mentioned yesterday... But hold on, what do you think would have happened if Romney had given those answers in a Republican debate? I think many Republicans just has just as much war fatigue... Now, if you're talking about an isolated community of Republicans... No, I'm talking about in the Republican debate. Standing on stage with Newt Gingrich, Ron Paul, Admiral Bachman, Rick Perry. I think there's a select group of people that you refer to as neocons that may have not been happy with that position, but there's many people in the Republican Party also that have war fatigue and think we need to concentrate on our economy, which I happen to think there's men for the time. Name one. I think there's men for... Name one. Uh, uh, people that have war fatigue? Yeah. Give me an example. Well, I know the people who are uh, clamoring for war. Uh, yeah, those would be called the neocons. I know the people that feel like and the people you feel like. Now, I don't necessarily, I can't name you off the top of my head, somebody that uh, that I've heard recently that's against war fatigue, or, you know, uh, that, is, that is against the war. The but fact is, Barack Obama there. spent the entire time being basically filleted by the, uh, the Romney campaign. But the, the Rom- Time and time again, he said, yes, I would do what the president did. Just, I don't know, well, more Romney's white and delightsome. The position is, is that if we give some economic incentives... If we do some things, invest some money in the country, help them uh, have a, a better Okay, but that's not record. what he said before or after. Um, what we about, can carry a big stick. Well, what about when he embraced the world court? That's been a boogeyman on the right for years. Well, as of last night, his strategy is to be strong, be strong economically, be strong milita- militarily, and like knowing uh, the martial arts. The whole idea of knowing martial arts is you don't have to use the martial arts. You carry yourself in such a manner that nobody's going to mess with Okay, but that hasn't been his foreign policy, and it certainly hasn't been the foreign policy of the right up until last night. uh, You're the one, and we're all embracing, let's have some new ideas. 
Okay, but when you have a very clearly expressed set of ideas and then come with something completely different, well, you think, as I do you said, think Mitt Romney had a serious change of heart? No, in his, no Bradshaw, but listen. Or is he perhaps pandering? As I said before, if, he, if, if, if Mitt Romney is the only candidate that has ever run one way in a primary and then run a different way in the general, then crucify him. But well, everyone does it. So, recall, so you're, all, you're recall, okay. You're okay with the etch a sketch. I recall. Do you su- Obama, hold on. Do you support the etch a sketch? What was Obama? Obama, he, man, the mandate was Hillary's idea, and Obama was against the mandate. Actually, the was mandate not? was the Republicans' idea. No, but in the debate between Hillary and Obama. Correct. Okay, so 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 Obama has changed his view. So if you're going to start casting stones at people who's changing their view, then cast your stone over on your side. I do cast my stone. Did you just miss the entire health care debate? Right, I'm a proponent of single payer at the very least. That's right. I know your position. At but, the very least, a, a public option, but Obama gave that away uh, before we even started. But, but, believe- but hold on. Hold on. Last night, um, again, the Afghanistan timeline, something he was against, now he agrees with. Uh, getting rid of Hosni Mubarak. Right, this was a big thing on the right. Uh, my, oh, my God, you know, the, the Islamists are going to take over, and we need to support our ally, even if he's a horrible you but know, dictator. Last he's night, he's a horrible he, uh, dictator. He's no boots on the ground asterisk. in Syria. He wants to use the world court. Didn't even bring up uh, Benghazi, which was probably a smart move after the beatdown he got he, uh, in the second debate. And when he was specifically asked, would you support Israel? If they were, you know, sending bombers uh, to Iran, he completely dodged the question rather than give the unflinching support um, for Israel. Are you Those talking- are all violations of right wing dogma. OK, first off, he's giving an asterisk next to that pullout time in Afghanistan to what the generals are saying on the ground. Now, he may not no, have no, he, oppo- he opposed that last it. He night. very clearly opposed it earlier in the year. He may not have clearly stated that last night, but everything I've heard uh, Romney and our side advocate is is yes, we're willing to go along with some abstract timeline as long as the generals on the ground say we can do this in in in, in an orderly fashion to where we're not putting ourselves in yeah, danger. Whether it's pulling out of Iraq, pulling out of Afghanistan. I mean, Mitt Romney threw right-wing foreign policy under the bus last night. And, by the way, you're not the only one who's cheering it on. Uh, Fox News was all over it. Charles Krauthammer, Romney won. Uh, Rich hey, Lowry, Krauthammer Romney said, I would have took after Obama with a ball back. But he says that's why I've never got voted in office. From a conservative point of view, you didn't have a representative on stage last night. Ignoring the 17 uh, Bush foreign policy well, advisors the, the right, on Romney's staff. After the left hook came the right cross, and the right cross was his open mic comment about Putin, and slamming Obama for that comment was the right cross that knocked him out. Then right, for friend, good you measure, saw a completely different debate than the rest measure, of us. Then for good measure, later on in the debate, he reached over, and, and while Obama was laying on the floor, he delivered a right cross to Bob Schieffer, and Bob Schieffer fell on top of Obama. When Bob Schieffer asked the question, what happens if you, he asked either candidate, well, I'm going to ask you both, he says. What happens if you get a call from Israel that says we're on our way with bombers? Yeah. To take and Romney out? completely dodged the question. No, he did not. What did he say? He said, he said, Bob, I'm not going to get that call. That call is an imaginary call. That call is not going to happen. That's called dodging the question. No, he said because that all the discussions of that would have happened months before I get that call. So that call's not going to happen. And Bob Schieffer says, oh, okay, we'll move on to another question. Yeah, that's called dodging the question, Frank. And now, you, of all people, the... should be used to that. How do you figure it's dodging the question? He's saying, I'm going to know to a month in advance whether uh, uh, Israel's going to war. I'm not going to have to wait till okay, I get and, the last and, second and call what, like, what like was, Obama. And what was the question asked of him? The question was asked of both candidates. All right. And what was the question asked of him? What would you do if you got uh, that call? Which Romney, again, sidestepped and moved elsewhere, which no. is which is a vi- hold on, which is a violation 
of right-wing foreign policy dogma, he, which is, we support Israel no matter what. He answered the question he by... He ran from it. No, he Frank, did. Frank, come tell, on. I'll, I'll tell you why he answered the question. Frank. He answered the question in a twofold manner. Obviously, it was, it was building himself up and at the same time slamming Obama for... In other words, Obama would get that call because Israel knows they're going to have to go it alone if Obama's in office. So Obama would get that call saying, hey, we're on our way. So Obama didn't even get a chance to answer because Romney's answer shut Bob He Schieffer's ran mouth. away from the question. He you, did look, not. Look, you can applaud the flip-flopping. You can be happy about it. Uh, but it, that doesn't change the fact that it's flip-flopping. Right, he embraced it, Obama's foreign policy, this running as the candidate of a party uh, that literally can't say that Barack Obama got out of bed on the correct side this is morning. How dodging the question when you, when you are implying by, by not your answering answer, it. you are implying by your answer that we would have talked in advance of that phone call, so therefore that phone call does not happen because they've either got my approval a month in advance or they've got my disapproval a month in advance. And what do you think happens if he gives the disapproval and Israel goes about it anyway? He would know. He would at least right, have Frank, a month. You're, in now you're dodging the premise of the question. When Israel calls at 3 in the morning and says, we've launched our bombers, even though you said no, what do you think Mitt Romney does? I think he supports Israel. You think, you think bombing, the unilateral bombing of Iran is a good idea? If it comes to the point Do them, you think that the unilateral bombing of Iran not is a good idea? If not he said look we're do gonna, you think before that uh, do Brad, you so think the whole, unilateral bombing of iran is a good idea did you hear how uh, romney <coughs> laid out how he was going to isolate ademijad and make him a pariah in the in the in the world community and it would only yeah he be said he was going to in, what indict him on uh, genocide charges in the world court there is sworn, the right wing hates the there world is, court but there there is sworn affidavits out in this world over people who testified under oath that this Ademijad was a terrorist, hijacker, a, a, a hostage keeper. There's people who have sworn okay, affidavits What did Mitt that, Romney say last night? That he would isolate Ademijad, make him a pariah, try to uh, prosecute him, and then after prosecute all, him. Prosecute him where? I didn't hear where they said they was going to prosecute. You're right, you did, because it, it took a Romney flack in the spin room to say in the world court. But what I am Which Romney is, advisor, John Bolton, uh, in particular, well, here, I will uh, throw this out there. Okay. This is, this is John Bolton, advisor to the, uh, the Romney campaign. Mr. Romney's ready or Mr. Obama's ready embrace of the International Criminal Court exemplifies his infatuation with handling threats to international peace and security as though they were simple local street crimes. It also reflects his overall approach to international affairs, a passive, legalistic America, deferring to international bodies, content to be one of 15 Security Council members rather than leading from the front. The only reason the Republicans... He works for Mitt Romney. I will tell you about the world court. Right. The only reason that the Republicans are careful of embracing the world court is if they don't want our presidents brought up on but, charges of war crimes. But Romney, it wasn't hesitant. Do you think there's some people that might... That there's people By the way, this wasn't the first time he had mentioned is, is, indicting... Uh, Ahmadinejad. Is he Gaddafi, said it back in September. Is Gaddafi's daughters, some of his daughters, suing somebody for their for the wrongful death of their father? I heard some. I saw okay, but but, but you're, well, you're you're ignoring the flip flop here, Frank. Why does the right wing all of a sudden like the International Criminal Court? Look, because they have a checkered record. They have a checkered past. That's why they're supporting them. That's not to say they've never I done I asked something. you why that, they're supporting look, them all of a sudden. That's not to say there's not a, 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 a position for them in, in, in the community. Well, that hasn't been the right wing's uh, belief for years. The right wing has been vehemently opposed. Because they know that there's people who would like to bring George Bush up on uh, being a war criminal. And you know it, and I know it. And Dick Cheney, probably. Let me ask okay. you before, before we let you go. Did Mitt Romney support the auto bailout? Did you look it up like Mitt said? 
No, I didn't get a chance to look that up. I was too busy. But I'm telling you, there's no. They both went. It, 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 basically, did Mitt Romney support the auto bailout? He wanted to do it a little different way, but no. What? What? What little different way? The argument is in the details of how they took it through a structured bankruptcy. Yeah. Where was the capital going to come from for a, a structured bankruptcy? Look, I'm not a bankruptcy lawyer, so I'm not going to get into uh, uh, over Well, my I'm head. not either, but I... I'm not going to get into Look something over my up. head, but all Pro- I'm wow. saying... All I'm saying... <laughs> that, that would eliminate a number of things, Frank. Well, yeah, look... There's some pretty obvious things that's out there, but I'm not a bankruptcy lawyer, and because I don't know the vernacular and the lexicon of of, 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 of bankruptcy court, I'm not going to get into a discussion right. and, and then made me look like uh, a fool because fa- I don't know something. The fact is Mitt Romney multiple times um, said not to uh, give them bridge loans under the Bush administration or uh, bail them out, let them go bankrupt in this uh, magic free market because you remember there was a credit crunch right you will admit yeah. to this all right capital Obviously. dried up yes so who was going to well, get the, the capital, money the capital was there if there's capital there but if people no are- that's the whole point that there wasn't and there certainly wasn't in the amount uh that gm whoa, would need Frank, you're just plain wrong. And Mitt Romney's trying to have it both ways, being the severely conservative free marketeer in 2008. And now when it hurts him in Ohio, which looks to be the pivot state uh, in this election, uh, where Obama has had a consistent lead, now all of a sudden we're walking away from that. No, what I really meant... and. Forget, well, just you know, on the face of it, Mr. Green, environmentalists, who would you think, Republican or Democrat, would be more on the side of the car companies who are burning fossil fuel? Barack and Obama. Would, and who because would be, I have evidence of it. And who would be more on more of the side of, you side is all pushing the green energy and, mm-hmm. and electric cars and all that stuff. Yeah. The Republican side is pushing diesel, gasoline as our uh-huh. option. So we certainly wouldn't be against Detroit. We certainly would Then why would your candidate argue to let them go bankrupt? Because That's the headline of the op-ed piece. we don't want government owning 50% of GM stock. We don't want Barack Obama naming the so, CEO of General Motors. We don't want Barack Obama hiring and firing. Great. What's the alternative? Look, I happen to be... Great. A- no problem. I accept your premise. Look, What's the alternative? Well, uh, uh, Romney was talking about bankruptcy, but more of a structured bankruptcy. We went through a structured bankruptcy. Like I said, I'm not a I'm not a tax lawyer, so I'm not going to attempt to get in that over. So my why head. was Romney trying to claim partial credit for the auto bailout last night? If you even admit that he wanted to do it differently, I can't give you that that precise of an answer. When you can get back to me, thanks, Frank. In fact, let's bring up the the video. There's. Uh, Oh, my list got, uh, there we go. Uh, let's bring up uh, the auto bailout. Uh, this was the debate last night uh, with uh, Mitt Romney trying to have his uh, cake uh, and let it go bankrupt, too. The president mentioned the auto industry and that somehow I would be in favor of jobs being elsewhere. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, I'm a son of Detroit. I was born in, in Detroit. Uh, my dad was head of a car company. Uh, I like American cars. And uh, I would do nothing to hurt the U.S. auto industry. My plan to get the industry on its feet when it was in real trouble was not to start writing checks. It was President Bush that wrote the first checks. I disagree with that. I said they need, these companies need to go through a managed bankruptcy. And in that process, they can get government help and government guarantees, but they need to go through bankruptcy to get rid of excess cost and the debt burden that they'd, they'd built up. And fortunately, Romney, the president took... Governor Romney, that's not what you said. Fortunately, the president... I, you can take, I, I, you can take a look Governor at the op-ed. Governor Romney, you, you, can did, take not, a look at the op-ed. you did not say you know, that I'm, you I'm would provide speaking. governor help. I said that we would provide guarantees, and, and that was what was allow, able to allow these companies to go through bankruptcy, to come out of bankruptcy. Under no circumstances would I do anything other than to help this industry get on its feet. And the idea that has been suggested that I would liquidate the industry, of course not. Of course not. Let's check That's the record. That's the height of silliness. Let, let, I have let's never check, said I would, check li- the record. I would liquidate the industry. Governor, I want the to people keep the industry in Detroit going don't and forget. thriving. I think anybody out there can check the record. Governor Romney, you keep on trying to you know, airbrush history here. 
you were very clear that you would not provide government assistance to the U.S. auto companies even if they went through bankruptcy. You said that they could get it in the private marketplace. That wasn't true. They would have you're, gone through a liquid. You're wrong, I, uh, No, I am not you're wrong. wrong. I, I am not people wrong. People look it up. And, and you're right. People will look it up. Good. People will look it up. I looked it up. The New York Times, November 17th, 2008. Let Detroit go bankrupt by Mitt Romney. Uh, now, Mitt Romney claimed that there would be government guarantees. And I, I've, I've had people uh, try to argue this with. He, he claimed that there would be federal guarantees. Well, that's true. From the op-ed piece that we looked up, like Mitt Romney asked, the federal government should provide guarantees for post-bankruptcy financing and assure car buyers their warranties are not at risk. Yeah, he's saying we need to take care of car payments and car warranties. There's also an AP piece where he says, uh, if you just write a check, you're going to see these companies go out of business uh, ultimately. Mitt Romney opposed the auto bailout. Again, in principle, I don't think it's a, pro a thing Republicans have a, a problem with, or at least when Ronald Reagan does it, uh, they don't have a problem with it. The problem was, well, then there was no way for them to take credit for it. Until now, then just claim credit for it. So, yes, I had people arguing with me last night that, uh, oh, no, Romney claimed there, there would be federal money. Yeah, to cover warranties and car payments, not for the bankruptcy. You know, this is, again, dealing with reality versus the bubble. What's funny is that with Obama, again, keeping a consistent lead in Ohio. I think Nate Silver says in 50% of his, you know, running the numbers, uh, Ohio is the state uh, that puts it over the top. That Mitt Romney could have shot himself in the foot. Back in 2008, uh, a bullet that's only landing in the fall of 2012. Um, and while that was an interesting part, it's certainly interesting it came up, uh, in a foreign policy debate. Uh, the clip of the night is, of course, horses and bayonets. Uh, load up uh, that clip, This because it, it's very telling. Uh, the last two debates, when Romney uh, has looked uh, his weakest, uh, his most vulnerable, and maybe his dumbest. Military spending, and that's this. Our Navy, our Navy is older, excuse me, our Navy is smaller now than any time since 1917. The Navy said they needed 313 ships to carry out their mission. We're now down to 285. We're headed down to the, to the low 200s if we go through with sequestration. That's unacceptable to me. I want to make sure that we have the ships that are required by our Navy. Our Air Force is older and smaller than any time since it was founded in 1947. We've changed for the first time since FDR. We all, since FDR, we had the, we've always had the strategy of saying we could fight in two conflicts at once. Now we're changing to one conflict. Look, th th this, in my view, is the highest responsibility of the President of the United States, which is to maintain the safety of the American people. And I will not cut our military budget by a trillion dollars, which is the combination of the budget cuts that the President has, as well as the sequestration cuts. That, in my view, is, is, is making our future less certain and less secure. Bob, I just need to comment on this. First of all, the sequester is not something that I proposed. It's something that Congress has proposed. It will not happen. The budget that we're talking about, is not reducing our military spending, it's maintaining it. But uh, I think Governor Romney maybe uh, hasn't spent enough time looking at how our military works. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. We have these things called aircraft carriers where planes land on them. We have these ships that go underwater, nuclear submarines. And so the question is not, uh, a game of battleship where we're counting ships, it's, it's what are our capabilities? And so when I sit down with the Secretary of the Navy and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, we determine how are we going to be best able to meet all of our defense needs in a way that also keeps faith with our troops, that also makes sure that our veterans have uh, the kind of support that they need when they come home. And that is not reflected in the kind of budget that you're putting forward because 
it just doesn't work. All right. And, you know, we visited the website quite a bit, and it still doesn't work. A lot to cover, I'd like. Obama sank his battleship. And, yeah, that's the, the quotable line. Uh, yes, there are all... Cavalrymenforromney.com is a actual website that now exists. Um, but a couple things. Uh, one, uh, the, the, the super slam, if you will. Uh, remember we saw this with the, uh, the 14 days to call it terror uh, in the second debate. In this one, it's the, our Navy is smaller than it's been since 1916, and our Air Force, uh, something telling here. Uh, both of these are kind of staples of, of AM radio, uh, the, the right-wing kind of, you know, nutosphere. We talked about this. Again, we mentioned the 14 days of Benghazi at the second debate. Uh, don't read the Prol feed. Uh, these are the kind of talking points that are distributed to guys like Hannity. Um, you know, Rush gets these. Uh, the right-wing websites, the Michelle Malkins get these, and they pass them along. Uh, because they're very influential to uh, people who don't know anything, uh, right-wing radio listeners, uh, who lap this stuff up with a spoon. Uh, they love it. And I, I don't think it's by accident that Romney looked his weakest, looked his dumbest when regurgitating their talking points. And like we said, the second debate, Romney has people. He has Hannity. He has Beck. He has Limbaugh who will carry this water for him. He doesn't need to spread the stupid. You have manure spreaders. You don't need to pick up a bucket yourself. And you make yourself, well, into a guy holding a bucket of poo when you do it. Uh, the funny thing is, um, in an effort to, I don't know, spin this into something, immediately following that super slam uh, on uh, the right-wing blogosphere went nuts. Uh, and they are now creating their own straw man to bayonet. Uh, when the president says, yes, we have fewer horses uh, and bayonets. At some point, that became, in right-wing jargon, we don't have any bayonets um, and we don't, like, use them at all. Um, in fact, Stars and Stripes kind of disagree. Said so the last... Uh, we still have bayonets. Well, according to Stars and Stripes, a noted left-wing rag, um, the, uh, there has not been a bayonet charge since the Korean War, and U.S. Army uh, units have not issued soldiers' bayonets uh, in Iraq uh, and Afghanistan. Uh, but again, it's a very different argument to say we don't have them and we don't use them versus we have fewer of them. We should set up some sort of war game scenario. We'll give uh, the most highly trained, uh, most expert uh, bayonet uh, yeah, but see wielder out there and then set him up against a, 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 an armed drone and see I, what I, happens. I'm going to guess, though, that, and this is kind of a little off topic, so I'll just take two seconds and I'll get out of your show, Bradshaw. But I, I'm going to guess that when they say bayonets, they're not really talking about what's issued today that would be a bayonet. Uh, all our ARs, uh, or M16s as the military call them, ARs, civilian version, have bayonet holders on them. And then you put a combat knife yeah, on yeah, the Yeah, you front. put your combat knife on. That becomes your bayonet. Yeah. So, no, they don't issue the old school flip out style. But no one's they, arguing that they don't. So, I doubt issue we actually them. have fewer of them. I would actually say, I bet because they're. We have military. more combat knives that you can stick on the front That's of an I'm M16. Saying. We don't I, have old school bayonets. Yeah, but. We I also mean, don't have as many muzzle just, loaders. Well, yeah, there you go. He, he could have used muzzle loaders. We don't have as many uh, pairs of breeches as our... Yeah, uh, no, that, those work. I think bayonets is kind of funny, though, because I bet we do have as many. Well, I mean, it's, it, again, it's when Romney is going to put himself... It was a funny remark. It I was. Know. I, and, it was funny. and it's funny how the right wing... Get, I liked the, all the, the, mime, or the memes. deal with that. Did you see all the memes were like Mitt Romney and it says, I don't even know how to play a battleship. <laughs> Uh, I'm not, the Obama campaign registered and set up cavalry, cavalry men for uh, Romney, uh, dot com. Uh, But again, this That's is a little childish, though, don't you think? I like it. It's almost as good as RomneyTaxPlan.com, which is my favorite maybe election website ever. 
Check out RomneyTaxPlan.com. It's, uh, it's a fun one to send uh, to your friends. The, the funny thing, again, this is the hack gap. Uh, after the first debate, right, liberals, um, in the case of like Chris Matthews and Andrew Sullivan, in their own special way, uh, could admit that our guy lost the debate. Said very upfront, very clearly. Uh, not only did he lose, he got worked, barely showed up. Meanwhile, on the right, it's an article of faith. Not only did Mitt Romney win the second debate, he scored huge on the third, in spite of all evidence to the uh, the contrary. Um, so we'll talk some more uh, when we come back, and I've got a slew more clips of Obama's crushing win uh, in the second debate, or as CNN called it, no real clear winner. Uh, in spite of their own polling, which, again, in the words of a great American, that takes some brass. Uh, so we'll talk about that uh, and more when we come back. Email me, radiobradshaw at gmail.com, and follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash radiobradshaw. Just go to, i got to do it backwards, thebradshawshow.com for almost all of your Bradshaw needs. Bradshawshow.com, uh, powered by Webcast One Live. Be back right after this. Thanks for watching. I'm glad that you recognize... From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. And he said not only would he like to be a sponsor, but he would offer a $100 tithe for every customer that came and bought a car from him directly to the church of your choice. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales. 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. Big John. Ever feel like there's more to life? God offers more. Chat now with an online coach at groundwire.net. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Rock concert movement number one. The basic head bob. Ready? Hello there. Bradshaw with you. 209 on a. Just, is the sun out yet? Overly moist. It's not the heat, it's the humidity. Tuesday afternoon in the capital city. The phone number is 244-0077. Email radiobradshaw at gmail.com. And follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash radiobradshaw, where you can see the mean things I say uh, to Kent Sorensen. But let's be honest, he earns those. Uh, the debate last night, again, I think the, the big takeaway, yes, the meme is going to be um, bayonets and horses. Um, but the, the real takeaway was um, 
Mitt Romney agreeing with Obama, whether it's on uh, Al Qaeda, Iran, Afghanistan. You know, no matter what the, the president brought, I, I'd do that too, but better, more delightsome. Um, over and over uh, through the night. Which, again, wasn't just different than the Romney we saw on stage at the Republican debates, but the guy we've seen on the campaign trail, or in some cases, uh, secretly recorded at a fundraiser, also held in Boca Raton. Um, here's, a, here's a clip of some of Romney's uh, better flip-flops uh, through the night. And the president calling him out on it because, let's be honest, a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. Oh, did we break something? That you recognize that al-Qaeda is a threat. Because a few months ago, when you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia. Not al-Qaeda. You said Russia. In the 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back. Because, you know, the Cold War has been over for 20 years. But, Governor, you know, when it comes to our foreign... What are we breaking here? Governor Romney, I'm glad that you recognize that al-Qaeda is a threat. Oh. The social policies of the 1950s and the economic policies of the 1920s. You say that you're not interested in duplicating what happened in Iraq. But just a few weeks ago, you said you think we should have more troops in Iraq right now. And the, the, the challenge we have, I know you haven't been in a position to, to actually execute foreign policy, but every time you've offered an opinion, You've been wrong. You said we should have gone into Iraq, despite the fact that there were no weapons of mass destruction. You said that we should still have troops in Iraq to this day. You indicated that uh, we shouldn't be passing uh, nuclear uh, treaties with Russia, despite the fact that 71 senators, Democrats and Republicans, voted for it. You've said that, first, we should not have a timeline in Afghanistan, then you said we should. Now you say maybe, or it depends, uh, which means not only were you wrong, but you were also confusing and sending mixed messages both to our troops and our allies. So what, what we need to do with respect to the Middle East is strong, steady leadership, not wrong and reckless leadership that is all over the map. And unfortunately, that's the kind of opinions that you've offered throughout this campaign. Boom. Speaking of maps, by the way, and being all over them, this was one of my favorite moments. And I'm not much of a geography nerd, uh, but I do love a Miss Teen South Carolina, you know, internet uh, viral clip. Uh, here's uh, Romney. Uh, play the, the clip Route to the, the Sea, because that, uh, this was a, a bit of a head scratcher. And again, this wasn't a new position for Romney. This is actually something he's been saying uh, for a while now, just, this is the uh, first is time you said it. a proposition that would lead us to be safer over the long term. Governor? Well, let's step back and talk about what's happening in Syria and how important it is. Uh, first of all, 30,000 people being killed by their government is a humanitarian disaster. Secondly, Syria is an opportunity for us because Syria plays an important role in the Middle East, particularly right now. Syria is Iran's only ally in the Arab world. It's their route to the sea. All right, now bring up the map. Because I'm, I'm curious how Syria is Iran's, well, route to the sea. Considering that, you know, Caspian Sea is there and the Persian Gulf. Maybe there's too much water there, so they have to go through to Syria. I'm, just, I'm not seeing how this works. If someone wants to explain it to portage. me. It's a portage. It's called a portage. Well, and not to mention, you kind of got to go through Turkey or Iraq to it's get... Just a, it's just an on-land portage, Bradshaw. You're being too critical. You know, they pick those ships up all the time with slaves or something. I don't know. I mean, that was almost Palin-esque last night. I, 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 and again, the, the original claim was, oh, everyone misspeaks, and it's true. Like uh, When Bob Schaefer called him Obama bin Laden, that's a misspeak. Uh, but this is the second or third time he said this to a camera. I don't really understand what he's trying to get at here. 
But maybe maybe I'm the weird one. Maybe the map, I'm old school or something. Uh, believe in atlases. Um, do we have like what are we, mappers, like birthers, but with maps? Or maybe he just got something from uh, the Fox News graphics department. Usually not all that accurate. Uh, but Romney does have Syria plans. There's a clip uh, Romney talking about uh, his plans in uh, in Syria or for Syria are to replace Assad and to have in place a new government which is friendly to us, a responsible government if, if possible, and I want to make sure they get armed and they have the arms necessary to defend themselves but also to, to, remove, uh, to remove Assad. But I do not want to see a military involvement on the part of, of, our, of our troops. What? And this, this, isn't, this isn't going to be necessary. We, we have, with our partners in the region, we have uh, sufficient resources to support those groups. But look, this has been going on for a year. This is a time, this should have been a time for American leadership. We should have taken a leading role, not militarily, but a leading role organizationally, governmentally, to bring together the parties there, to find responsible parties. As you hear from intelligence sources even today, the, 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 the insurgents are highly disparate. They haven't come together. They haven't formed a unity group, a, co a council of some kind. That needs to happen. American can help that happen. And we need to make sure they have the arms they need to carry out the, the very important role, which is getting rid of Assad. Can we get a quick response from the well, President? Because I want to ask I'll, about I'll, Egypt. I'll be, I'll be very quick. Uh, what you just heard Governor Romney said is uh, he doesn't have different ideas. Uh, and that's because we're doing exactly what we should be doing to try to promote uh, a moderate Syrian leadership and a, an effective transition so that we get Assad out. That's the kind of leadership we've shown. That's the kind of leadership we'll continue to show. You know, where was the difference between what Romney was saying? It was basically just a giant hugathon. Uh, how about Romney speaking on Egypt? And this was his talk, uh, or this was his uh, discussion of Egypt. So bring uh, bring that clip up. Would you have stuck with Mubarak? Uh, no, I, I believe, as the president uh, indicated and, and said at the time, that I supported his, his action there. I felt that uh, I, I wish we'd have had a better vision of the future. I, I wish that looking back at the beginning of the president's term and even further back than that, that we'd have recognized that there was a growing uh, energy and passion for freedom in that part of the world and that we would have worked more aggressively with our, our friend and with other friends in the region to have them make the transition towards a more representative form of government such that it didn't explode in the way it did. But, but once it exploded, uh, I felt the same as the president did, which is these, these freedom voices in the, the, the streets of, of, of Egypt were the people who were, were speaking of our principles. And the, the, uh, President Mubarak had done things which were unimaginable. Uh, and, the, and the idea of him crushing his people was not something that we could possibly uh, support. Now, again, it's nice of uh, Romney to, I guess, assume superpowers of some sort. Well, we should have known that this was going to happen ahead of time, but once we didn't. And it was nice to see him admit that, uh, yes, Hosni Mubarak did things that are unimaginable. Um, Romney has come a long way since February 1st. He said that uh, he wouldn't call uh, Hosni Mubarak a dictator. And again, this was the, the right-wing dogma at the time, is that uh, we should support Hosni Mubarak. I, yeah, you know, who cares that he's a you know, dictator who tortures his people. We voted for Dick Cheney twice. I mean, come on. You know, for fear of the Islamic people. As if, you know, it's our job to decide, you know, who runs, uh, who runs Egypt. Um, it's time to start. We're already started. Maybe you need to start over. <laughs> uh, here's uh, the piece. Uh, this is when uh, Romney and Obama got into it over the uh, the Iraq war. And this one is kind of telling me, I'd say, a good chunk it's of the reason. Iraq. You and I agreed, I believe, that there should have been a status of forces agreement. That's Did you? True. Oh, you didn't, you didn't want a status of forces no, agreement? No, what I, what I would not 
have done is left 10,000 troops in Iraq that would tie us down. That certainly would not help us in the Middle East. I'm sorry. Look, you actually, there was, a, there was an here, effort on the part is, of the president to have a status is, of forces agreement. Is, and I concurred in that and said that we should have some number of troops that stayed on. That was something I concurred with. Go, that Governor, was your posture. That was my posture as well. You thought it should have been 5,000 troops. Governor, I thought it should have been more troops. But you know what? The answer was we got no troops ago. through whatsoever. This is just this a is, few weeks ago that you indicated that we should still have troops in Iraq. No, I didn't. Now, that, I'm sorry. That's a, that, you, I, you I made indicated a major you, speech. I indicated that you failed to put in place a status of Governor. forces agreement at the end of the conflict that exists. Governor, here, here's, 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 here's one thing I've here's one thing I've here's, here's one thing I've learned as commander in chief. You've got to be clear, both to our allies and our enemies, about where you stand and what you mean. Now you just gave a speech a few weeks ago in which you said we should still have troops in Iraq. That is not a recipe for making sure that we are taking advantage of the opportunities and meeting the challenges of the Middle East. So, again, it's Romney running away from not just right-wing dogma, but his own positions last night. And I don't know whether this was uh, the prevent defense. Uh, but, again, saying he didn't bring up uh, Benghazi and ended up agreeing uh, with Obama for most of the night. And when uh, matters did turn to domestic, we saw him arguing with his own uh, Detroit, you know, let them go bankrupt policy. And, well, it showed, looking at uh, public policy polling. Uh, they did a post-debate survey in 11 swing states. Uh, Obama wins 53-42. Uh, the CBS poll of undecided voters, uh, which I would argue is better than CNN's kind of uh, sample, which, again, they didn't give the... Uh, sample numbers for this time. They did it for the first debate when it showed it was all uh, white Southerners over the age of 50, which might not be a representative sample of the nation as a whole. Um, but they, they've stopped giving the, the demographic uh, data. Um, but the CBS poll of undecided voters, 53-23, uh, uh, Obama. Uh, Google uh, 45.1 to 35.3 Obama. And finally, the, the CNN poll of registered voters who watched the debate uh, showed a 48-40 uh, win uh, for Obama. And yeah, this leads to a problem if you're, you're CNN. And I guess they are, they are the undecided voter. I turned that down. Uh, this, is, this is the clip from CNN. Um, which let me just go, what? Because this was on, uh, on CNN's website uh, last night, if you can bring the, uh, ah. Uh, forceful Obama, best defensive Romney in foreign policy debate. Breaking news, there was no clear winner of Monday's presidential debate, according to a CNN Orc uh, poll of who watched. Now, I, an eight point lead is pretty big, right? I guess you don't. You know, are you with me here on this one? Or are you? I I guess I don't know. I mean, I would assume so. If I won by eight points, I would I, I would be touting it. I'd, I'd also be, have turned on my cell phone before the show. So though. did I. Which I don't know why it uh, started to. It's that Android. You should quit hacking it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a little weird. With the, uh, I just fired up my phone. It's been acting. Not everyone turns off their phone apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. It's contagious in this building. <laughs> Um, again, pretty, unless you're Wolf Blitzer, pretty decisive win. What did Wolf what, what uh, Blitzer say? Um, he actually, he was quiet most of the, the post. Uh, I watched uh, some MSNBC. I couldn't find a good stream of Fox because it was in the I office. tried I to had... watch that just to see if you would win. Because right now I have us that neither one of us won. Because you, yesterday you made a bet that Wolf Blitzer would declare it an even draw. Yeah. Well, he always says it's a tie. But he hasn't yet. I don't know. That's CNN breaking news headline. That was the uh, the breaking news flash they sent out to all their apps and and I thought uh, I text thought lists. Romney would come out swinging. And I'm going to have to disagree with uh, Frank that in the first two minutes the debate was won. No, I thought. In fact, my first response was that was a whole lot of uh, 
uh, stammering. In fact, I've got the clip, Romney on extremists. This is how he opened uh, the the debate. And you tell me if this is if you think this is is strong and uh, and swinging, because I I didn't see. With it. the Arab Spring came a great deal of hope that there would be a change towards more moderation an opportunity for greater participation on the part of women in, in public life and in the economic life in the Middle East. But instead, we've seen in nation after nation uh, a number of disturbing events. Of course, we see in Syria 30,000 civilians having been killed by the military there. Uh, we see in, in, uh, uh, in Libya uh, an attack uh, apparently by, well, I think we know now, by terrorists of some kind against, uh, against our people there, four people dead. Our hearts and, and minds go to them. Uh, Mali has been taken over, the northern part of Mali, by al-Qaeda-type uh, uh, individuals. Uh, uh, we have in, in Egypt a Muslim Brotherhood president. And so what we're seeing is a, a, a pretty dramatic reversal in the kind of hopes we had for that region. And, of course, the greatest threat of all is Iran, four years closer to a nuclear weapon. And, and we're going to have to recognize that we have to do as the president's done. I, I congratulate him on, on taking out Osama bin Laden and going after the leadership in al-Qaeda. But we can't kill our way out of this mess. We're, we're going to have to put in place a very comprehensive and robust strategy to help the, the, the world of Islam and, and other parts of the world reject this radical, violent extremism, which is it's certainly not on the run. It's certainly not uh, hiding. This is a group that is now involved in 10 or, or 12 countries, and it presents an enormous threat to our friends, to the world. Uh, to America long term, and we must have a comprehensive strategy to help reject this kind of extremism. Mr. President. Now, again, it wasn't quite a Palin esque word salad, but does anyone want to explain to me what he was trying to say there? Because I didn't pick that up. I'm a relatively bright fellow. You didn't think that was a knockout punch? Not so much. But I, I did, you know, my ears perk up. You know, you can't kill, we can't kill our way out of this. Yeah, I don't. It's certainly been that kind of violates the hawkishness that we've seen from the the right, and certainly if you I, look I gotta at. I got to be honest. I mean, we we didn't give Barack Obama credit when he when uh, they got Osama bin Laden, so I don't know why we would be inconsistent here and pretend like he's some kind of uh, crazy killer that's just killing everybody well, to get his will. Romney rightfully. Uh, figured out that he doesn't have to pander to that far right uh, base. Oh, uh, I don't think rightfully. No, I, I no, I, I he. Again, this goes back to a Fox News poll got probably six months ago, and when they ask Romney supporters, you know, what's your number one reason uh, for supporting Romney? Uh, he's not Barack Obama was the far and away uh, winner. Sure, Romney realized that if he's got an R next to his name. The crowd hammers and the like will uh, carry his water, and they will declare him the the victory. You know the victor, and they will. Um, oh, he's surging. He has momentum. It doesn't matter what he does. You know we saw him again agreeing to Dodd Frank and regulations. Like what? And the right wing applauded. We saw him, you know, agree with timelines. Uh, support the world, you know, court. All, you know, bits of blasphemy or heresy from the right. And Fox News will extol his virtues. Again, this is the hack gap. When Obama loses, we say it. When Romney loses, he won indecisively. Uh, how, again, how do I know that Romney lost? Uh, watch the reaction on the right. Uh, there were some that just couldn't help themselves from yelling at Bob Schaefer which I don't understand, considering that he was almost a non-entity uh, last night. Um, but maybe the, the Ann Coulter. Uh, when this popped up on my computer screen, I understood that the right had nothing. Um, and this was Ann Coulter last night. Uh, I expect a uh, full-throated condemnation from Sarah Palin uh, any day now. I understand that Ann Coulter hasn't been uh, relevant since the 90s, but uh, it is telling. Again, when you when you run out of bullets, throw your gun. When you don't have that, I don't know, throw shoes or throw the R word around. Um, but again, big win 
uh, not just in the debate, which all the, the snap polls showed, but most, again, in the post-debate spin, where these things are truly won uh, and lost. And, again, the headlines are, you know, again, Romney changes position, Obama strong, uh, or as Politico called it, too soon to call a winner. Um, take heed that, again, this is what the, the media doesn't want to talk about because it's bad for ratings, uh, not because they're in the tank for Obama or not because they're in the tank for, for Romney. They're in the tank for the number of eyeballs that tune in. And if they say, yeah, you know what, without Ohio, Romney's not going to win. Uh, even Iowa uh, is irrelevant because it looks like Wisconsin is sewn up uh, Obama. Pennsylvania is fool's gold for Republicans, and why are they spending money there? I have no idea. They're not going to win it. It's going to come down to Ohio. That makes for a really horrible night of TV watching. Instead of saying, hey, the map still greatly favors Obama, it's close. Romney has momentum. Why? So you'll tune in. You'll watch the Situation Room. You'll care what Greta Van Susteren has to say without OJ being involved. You know, that's what it ultimately comes down to. The fundamentals of this election are strong, if I may go McCain here. Uh, I understand that, again, the old saying that you give Republicans bad poll numbers, they want to shoot you. You give liberals bad poll numbers, they want to shoot themselves. Uh, don't panic. Uh, we'll have more tomorrow. In the meantime, follow me on Twitter. You can drop me an email, radiobradshaw at gmail.com, or just go to thebradshawshow.com. It's got everything you need there. Archives uh, of the show. If you want to see my stunningly accurate debate predictions, it's at uh, thebradshawshow.com. Except you lost last night. I wasn't. Well, no, I, I said Obama was going to win. I Wolf Blitzer, I don't think, rendered a judgment. So I'm going to defer to CNN. I think you lost. Just call it a loss. Be honest. I just think. Just be honest. I'm just I, asking. You lost. Just say I it. think Wolf Blitzer uh, held back. Just but, say you lost. But hold on. CNN did say there was no clear winner. You said Wolf Blitzer. I get 50% credit. Who employs Wolf Blitzer? You get 10% credit. I get 50%. We'll credit. give you 25 I get and half that's it. credit. Nope. You get a quarter credit. Because CNN called it a tie in spite of their own poll then, showing a big win for I Obama. Then I can take the first, the first two minutes and say that it was a knockout punch. Yeah, but you don't actually believe that. Yeah, well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you, you would make a good Republican pun. <laughs> All right. I got to scoot. I will see you fine folks tomorrow. Thanks for watching uh, The Bradshaw Show here on Webcast One Live. Thanks for coming.